My name is Leon Kidai and uh, you are? <laughs> Some random person. <laughs> yeah. This personal hostage for life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have my rings. I don't know where they are. Anyway, so today I just wanted us to sort of um, talk about what it means to actually be a Christian in a time where the world is, you know, needing encouragement, uh, love, and practical help mm -hmm. uh, with this coronavirus. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts? Actually, it's been so tough. Just trying to figure it out because I think a lot of us are waking up to a whole new reality, mm -hmm. and we feel like none of the basic principles of life work in this reality but yeah. i think one of the most wonderful things about um, christianity about the word of god is that it stands true through all times so like leon was talking about the good samaritan story before and i was like wow look it really applies now so yeah tell us yeah the good samaritan story from luke 10 uh, 25 to 37 highlights what being a good neighbor is mm -hmm. and just to paint a picture um, we have uh, this man who was attacked by robbers and he was laying on the side mm -hmm. and um, the first person who came across uh, walking down that road was a priest uh, and this was a person who was respected in the Jewish culture and uh, you would have thought this guy would be able to help uh, the man on the road giving practical help and being a good neighbor mm -hmm. but you find that he actually moved to the other side of the road and walked past him mm -hmm. then another person um, a, le a Levite came through and mm -hmm. you know Levites were actually set apart to do God's work mm -hmm. and um, he too saw the man and walked uh, on the other side of the road mm -hmm. and you're like what? Mm -hmm. these religious people they should be offering practical help and you know at least give the man some assistance is dying basically mm -hmm. but then you have this samaritan people who are far away from god like they weren't considered to be mm -hmm. you know a chosen generation of of god mm -hmm. but this person had a heart to actually see the need the person had on the wayside mm -hmm. and he took him put him on his donkey mm -hmm. took him to an inn paid for everything the man needed in the inn mm -hmm. And even told the innkeeper that, you see, if you spend more than this, I will come back and I will pay the full amount. He actually went out of his way, even though he wasn't considered like a religious person. Mm -hmm. You can learn a thing or two from that story. And you know what yeah. Jesus is trying to bring about? The two greatest commandments, basically, like loving yeah. your neighbor mm -hmm. and loving uh, God with all your heart, with all your mind and with all your soul. Yeah. And so from, from this, what lessons do you draw? Uh, both... Uh, essential and practical for me I think so like we've been talking a lot about what loving loving our neighbors is here mm -hmm. and honestly number one loving our neighbors is thinking of those who are less able whether it's in terms of money in terms of time mm -hmm. in terms of age um, the vulnerable people and how we can love those people is actually not panic buying Yep. So I remember like um, in the story of the Israelites, they, they were told the, when they were receiving manna from heaven, they were told, pick just what you need. And yeah. guys, even in the deepest of quarantines, shops still stay open. Yeah, they still like, open. can we just love our neighbors by being considerate in how we go out and spend? Not everyone has that much cash on hand. Yeah. Um, I know some of my friends and some people around this area are actually offering to help older people or people in quarantine to do their shopping and things like that. I think that's that's how to love your neighbor. Your neighbor yeah. Another thing, loving your neighbor is self-isolation and quarantine. <laughs> yeah. So this dude this dude has, has a cold and uh, and I had some symptoms also and the urge to just go out and work and be a productive member of society is really high, especially because he works with homeless people. Yeah, so like for example, um I think one of the uh, conflicts I had within myself is that yeah. I'm actually going outside to help people, people yeah. who really need my help. Yeah. But the way you're talking about, you know, it's counterintuitive because mm -hmm. uh, I may think that I'm going to help people, but I'm actually putting them at risk. At risk. Yeah. Don't don't put others at risk. I know we're talking about being practical and helping, but if, for example, you've been exposed, you've you've got some of the symptoms, if the government advisory or your work advisor and everyone has given you certain directions 
trust that what they're saying is for the best of not just you personally but for the entire population you know they're not thinking about the comfort of one person yep. they're thinking about the safety of a nation the safety of a globe mm -hmm. so let's let's heed these precautions let's stay away from others and just because you're isolated doesn't mean you can't reach out you can still you know call text video conference as like there's so many ways to I'm stay sure, in yeah, touch absolutely. Um, another way I think is to be positive and um, not like oh lovey dovey oh there's no such thing as corona but <laughs> don't spread rumors Aki I hate rumor mongering and then the amount of misinformation honestly I feel like unblocking every single person who sends a text written forwarded as received. That means you didn't do your due diligence to check if your source was correct. You're just spreading misinformation. Don't be a rumor monger. Be a positive monger. <laughs> what is that? Positive vibes only. <laughs> spread the truth, spread practical help, spread good information, check your sources, as in like guys. Let's be good human beings. Don't yeah. join in the don't join in the fear and the anxiety. I think there's there's a way to add and change the atmosphere that you step Absolutely. into Absolutely. online mm -hmm. and in the real world. Like affect the atmosphere of the space you step into positively. Yeah. Yeah. Be a part of whatever your church is recommending you do online. Um, mm -hmm. Go to church online. Spend time Absolutely. seeking God, listening to God. Especially now that, you know, most churches have decided to, mm. you know, cease uh, having services uh, yeah. on a Sunday. Uh, there's so many ways to continue connecting to people, connecting with God. Um, <laughs> finally, read your Bible. <laughs> I know you. Pray. <laughs> pray every day. This is one of those times where we have no excuse. There's so many resources out there. If you're not connected online all the time, there's, there's many other resources. Like, for example, you can download and then go home and mm. consume yeah all those bible study books you've kept on the side you know daily bread those people you've got for like a decade and you never read them <laughs> this is the time <laughs> it's time it's anyway time. guys this is our effort to put some positivity out there to yeah. bring life and advice to you so yeah so god love you and leave you take care see you in the next episode <laughs> bye <laughs> bye